I hope you guys are doing good. Uh, yeah. Testimonial is gone, but why? Yeah. I'll answer that question. Uh, just give me a feedback. You are able to hear me and see the screen, right? Yes. Okay, great. So, Sailesh, yes, thank you for joining. We are only 38. Yes, uh, great. So, guys, uh, in today's session, uh, we have very important topic. And uh, trust me, guys, 
uh, how I was able to achieve the 25 plus, I mean, maybe 20 plus organization, few of the offer letters I have not taken, right? So similar way I have learned the Red Hat Linux system administration. I have went through the certification course and uh, I was able to crack this organization. And you know, every DevOps engineer should have this certification in your bucket or else at least the knowledge, right? Now, I have given the topic we will be going through in a little while, but few of the questions I'll take first. Okay, for the student who has got the LPA straight off out of the college, right? Yes, so many questions are there around that. I know, yes. Uh, the first thing is, uh, I ask the student and I know whenever I, uh, I acknowledge anyone, right? Or someone comes to me stating, Praveen, because of your sessions, I got this much package and I am selected in this organization. I first check their concern. So in the similar way, I have asked the student, okay, that's really great. Can I go ahead and mask your package and mask your organization name along with your name, right? He said, okay, bhaiya, go ahead and mask my name and uh, whatever the other details, but don't mask the package, right? So uh, that is the reason I have not uh, masked his package. And uh, I think somehow uh, their management came to know and, uh, and they have asked me to put the video down, right? And also in the LinkedIn, Within 30 minutes, guys, uh, the LinkedIn post got viral, right? And uh, it reached around uh, 6,000 views in 30 seconds, 30 minutes, right? And uh, that is the reason I have to take that uh, video down. Uh, but yeah, uh, after I get the confirmation from the management, right? Uh, I will be putting it back. You can check out that, right? And definitely, uh, I have many testimonials, not only that, right? You can connect with me on Instagram. Uh, Singham for DevOps, right? And uh, I have pinned the comment also. And please take the attendance. Yeah, it is in the description. The link will be in the description of the video, right? Yes, I know, I know. See, uh, many of you I know uh, personally or some or the other way you have connected with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, right? Telegram, Vandana, Niharika, Nikhil, yes, Muni, yes, Rajiv. I know many of you. And those who know the value of these sessions, I know they are joining and uh, thank you all. Right, great. So with that said, today is 23rd July and uh, it's 4, 4, 10 p.m. Right. And uh, we are at seventh week of our bootcamp. Right. And we are left with two sessions and one project session. So we have all together three weeks to go for our bootcamp to get complete. Right. So, yes, uh, with that said, we all we are good. Right. To start the session and uh, guys, 96 are watching. Uh, so every time I say the like target on this uh, video will be 200 uh, because even though 100 people join, the like target goes ahead, right? So yes, uh, please make it uh, a 200 like video. You all know that uh, our bootcamp is running successfully and people are showing interest, right? And uh, due to some personal reasons, people are not joining. Yes. So yeah, uh, uh, first we will make it 100 likes and then we'll go ahead with the next likes. Okay. So yes, uh, I hope you all are good. Yes. Uh, and uh, awesome. Count doesn't matter. Start it. Great. Yes. So Nikhil has asked us to start. So with that, you have your notes and uh, everything ready, right? Whatever the questions which has come to me in direct paper, I have kept here, right? And uh, I know how much importance each of the topic for us is, right? So yes. So the first topic we will discuss about the yum repo configuration. We'll talk about little bit of how we will create a yum repository, how actually we will work on those things. Okay. Now, first thing is guys, yum is nothing but right. It is a repository package manager, which will help us to install all the softwares on the Linux system, right? Yes. So I hope you guys know, right. We will go step by step and note down each of the step in your notes. I'll be sharing the document to you all. Those who have opted for the documents, those who have not opted for the documents, I have made the link available in the description, uh, in the attendance sheet. And I have pinned the comment also in the live chat, right? Yes. Everything is asked in the interviews. So no doubt, no question is outside of interview. You will be asked every other question, which I'm telling you in my live sessions, right? So first thing first, uh, guys, uh, listen here carefully. So for the yum repo to work, right? When you give a command like yum install some software, right? Now what is happening? It will hit the internal repository first. It will check in the Linux system, whether that repository is present or not, that software is present or not. If it is present, it will take from that folder and install for us, right? Okay, guys, I hope you are able to see clear. If you are not able to see properly, right? What I would suggest is increase. Okay. Okay. I'll do one thing. 
I'll do one thing. Yes. Uh, I think my screen is proper only. Yes. My screen is proper only, guys. Right? You're right? Someone is telling screen is blur. Okay. You want me to make big? Clear? Yes. Okay. I will check in the screen how it is looking now. Just give me one second. Okay. Yes. I think uh, it should be good now. We are back here. I, I'm just checking the settings so that you don't get uh, confused and uh, you don't get uh, trouble. Okay. So, okay. The screen is cut now. Okay. I think the first was good. Uh, okay. Just give me one second. I'm setting the screen here for you all. Okay. I think the first one is good guys. Okay. I will not change anything. Yeah. I'm not going to see the chat also because it's distracting me as many of you have told. Okay. So just we'll go ahead. Okay. So the first step is create a directory guys. As I have told you when we are installing a software, let's take a software one is there. Okay. First software is there. And now what is happening in the Linux system when we ask for a software, it will first try to check in the local Linux system, which is a yum repository if the software is not present then it will hit the internet and get the data okay so now if you are seeing here step one is create a directory in the linux system now what we are doing step one is making the directory some directory some directory of your name let's take i am creating a rhca e lab session seven okay so this is my directory now df h i'll be telling each command with full form guys note it from your wherever you are noting okay okay guys those who are watching in mobile i would request you to go ahead with your laptop or a tv okay that will give you a better view at the same time it will help you to uh, actually connect with the session okay great so now uh, we are making a directory right df hyphen h okay this is the full form disk free hyphen h is human readable format okay so when i am giving the df hyphen h to this particular repository what is happening it is giving me the uh, size of that uh, particular folder it is giving me how much percentage of the folder has been used disk basically how much is available and the usage percentage okay now what we are trying to do is we are copying all the packages okay cp is nothing but copy okay copying what we are copying guys i told you when we are trying to install a software first it will check the linux system right so linux has some packages right so all the packages we are moving where guys we are moving to the directory which we have created okay got it now once I have done that, okay, what I am doing, step three, initialize the create repo package, guys, in order to make the yum repository, okay, from the yum repository, we are getting the softwares, okay, in order to initialize or in order to create a folder, in order to convert a folder into a yum repository, you need a software called create repo, okay, got it, I will repeat again, because this is a good question, actually, in order to create a folder, a normal folder into a yum repository <coughs> you actually give this create repo package you need okay now for that package what we are trying to do you see here okay now we have the create repo package okay how we got the package you just google it i have not kept the link here right uh, if you google it you will get the create repo package and you can install that into your linux system now rpm red hat package manager this command we have discussed in uh, last session also right hyphen i is installed v is verbose getting me yes now what i am trying to do last time i told you right what is rpm guys rpm is a package manager red hat package manager which has all the binaries inside it now let's take this is our application application is residing under this package manager okay now when i am giving rpm hyphen install whatever the package which is present in this repository it will be installed you are seeing create repo right header it started installing 100 percent now what i am doing i am at the repo folder only which we have created in the step one right all are with me yes give a yes if you are with me right and also i'll be making sure you all are getting the important things as we progress you will come to know what is networking what is linux networking uh, how actually a system ip address is assigned to a linux system right we'll be seeing all those things in clear guys right so i hope you all are with me yes going ahead right so now you have created a folder at step three what we have done guys we have converted the repo a normal folder into a yum repository now what we are doing see we are assigning a create repo command now we have installed the create repo package 
and with the create repo package what we are converting we are converting the folder into a yum repo so you see work has finished everything and now what will happen is all our yum configurations will be residing in this rhce lab slash repo right great now i hope you are with me step four we have not done anything we have converted a normal folder like d drive some folder is there with your name so we have converted that d drive folder with your name to your, to the yum repository now in the step two we will see how we will create a yum repo file okay guys all are with me beautiful topics i am 100 percent sure all will ask you this questions okay so never worry about these things right i will be giving you the best content right now don't uh, go away from the stream all our important topics i am 100 percent sure it will help you <coughs> if you can keep directly in your resume right now we have created the yum repository right all are agreeing with me we have created a uh, yum repository right now in the yum repository we have to add some configuration files for the software installations now step in this slide will be that only we'll be adding some files this is a file okay so now let's take one thing okay now this is a rhcc lab dot repo this is a file right which is present in the yum dot repos dot d okay now last time in the session uh, six we have installed the grafana we have installed the prometheus right we have installed so many things now in this session we will be detailedly set seeing what is jpg key what is enabled what is base url okay now this is a file guys last time what we have done guys for installing the grafana we had a separate yum repo file correct you we had a file yes great now for the installation of prometheus we had a separate repo file dot repo basically so whenever we are trying to add some topic we'll create a dot repo file getting me now we will go to the details what that dot repo file should have <coughs> in order to make sure when you install a command yum install some software yum install maven yum install apache yum install http it will first hit this folder okay file and it will get the data from the base url okay getting me all are with me give a yes why okay give a why if you are with me if you are having any questions give a n right and we will be answering those things in a while okay getting me yes great so yes now i will be telling each things what does yum repo has okay now yum repo has a name guys name means name is generally a notification or a notion right name actually tells like okay this is your repo right so rhc e repo is our file name right or else software installation part name right now if you are not going with that name you can give any name session seven okay i am tell talking about here file contents we are talking about here file contents okay what actually in a yum configuration the files file content should be i am talking about that right now first thing you have a name the name can be anything right if you see here right v i e t c yum dot repos dot d under that we have created a file right so if you see right rhce repo right and i'm mapping each thing here right so if you see the mapping is like a label of the repository right so in every product what we do we attach a label to it right the uh, manufacturing date and all those things right so the etc yum dot repos dot d uh, file has rhc repo which is a name name or a label right getting me that is a label guys the first letter or the first line is a label now we are at name equal to rhc repo what does that mean i have kept here this is a configuration value and is used to set the name of the repository okay now when you give yum repo list okay yum repo list is the command which is actually listing down all your yum repositories present in your system right so our if i give the command my yum repo uh, list okay yum repo list it will give me this name getting me okay let's take you have a grafana grafana installation also now what i will do i will copy this entire thing okay i will change that as grafana repo i will change the name as grafana repo i will change the base url from the internet where it should actually point and bring me the grafana uh, package and enabled one and gpg check i will be talking about base url is nothing but as i am telling you guys these three are important okay everyone will ask what is enabled what is gpg check what is base url for that reason you should know base url is nothing but it is a url which actually the linux will yeah, uh, the linux will come to know that okay the package is present in that url and from their url 
that url it will pick from there and it will install it will bring down to your linux system getting me yes okay great so now going ahead what is enabled one many of you have asked me in the last session guys those who have missed the session six for them this is the content right so enabled uh, one is nothing but right you can see if the value is set to zero then repository is disabled guys okay so what what we are trying to do right what we are trying to do here is right basically let's take there are two persons okay person one and person two now you are the owner of this repository all right and uh, you uh, the other person you are just asking him to check the repositories but not do anything right now when the person two is trying to access like yum install grafana but in the grafana i have checked enabled as zero right now what will happen this person will not get the package from here this file you are getting me this person will get not get the package and he will not be able to install enabled one means we have enabled this file for the work if i'm giving zero you can see enabled zero then repository is disabled right all are with me yes a capital y or a small yes uh, sorry a small y whatever it is a y or a yes you can denote so that you guys are with me okay yes yes getting me okay tanjal yeah thank you anyone else only tanjal aman yes great okay julie has joined thank you that's really great okay abhishek yes so guys that's what the important thing is now we are going ahead with the gpg check okay now what is gpg check guys usually what happens now you all know when we hit a url right every url is having a what we have guys a username and a password correct few urls have the token authentication few urls have the otp authentication few urls have the multi-factor authentication right few urls have the uh, can anyone tell me one one type of authentication we go right can anyone tell me what is the other type of authentication which i have not told i have told the otp based authentication i have told uh, the mfa i have told uh, what else username password any other thing any other authentication you all know anything no you don't know okay ha huh. oh 2.0 anything else yes key based okay great ssh ssh is not uh, authentication i am talk talking about how you actually make your urls more secure yes oh yes great great two factor yes great great you all are awesome yes sso yes mrunal but thank you mrunal for joining that's really good so mrunal has given me the answer sso is one thing single sign on we call it yes service account key based drsa i think you all are really knowledgeable in this field right two factor authentication yes so key based yes all are correct yes so that's where we are actually trying to go ahead right now when we give gpg zero check what we are trying to do we are actually trying to tell that okay you don't need to go there right and get the data if the value is set to one integrity will be checked if the value is set to zero integrity will not be checked and what is integrity guys like a url is here and the person is actually trying to hit the url now <clears throat> if i am keeping like one if the gpg check is one then this url authentication will be checked right and there will be a key we need to provide if the uh, uh, gpg key is zero gpg check is zero it means no authentication no type of authentication direct access to that url will be given right all are with me yes able to understand this slide very clearly i have put you all to understand yum is a yellow doc update manager everything is crisp and clear yes so we are moving to next thing very important i have kept this as a third slide so that you don't get bored very interesting topic how we will assign the ip address to the system right anyone know okay i will ask you a question apart from the slide what you are seeing anyone know how to assign an ip address to a linux system how to modify the dns of the linux system anyone knows apart from the nmcli software anyone knows guys anyone knows yes no yes no okay okay i'm still waiting for your answer you all got my question right how you will change the ip address of the linux system app not ip address of the linux system without using nmcli no you guys don't know yes host file no no host file is a normal thing like a basic thing right 
only the ip address will be changed you cannot change the dns you cannot change the ethernet network names and all those things no idea ip tools yes okay that's closer network manager command line yes not nmcli apart from that nmui yes nmui is a part of nmcli yeah uh, ip config command you have to edit resolve.conf etc syscom yes network scripts that's really great tanmesh okay a uh, uh, hands up to you great if config if, if config etc host ip address okay nmtui yes almost all are correct yeah few of them uh, are not correct but that's fine yeah we are network scripts now guys this is a straightforward uh, red hat linux question okay which i'll be talking about all are straightforward red hat linux questions only for the yum repository i got one question for the ip address dns changes i've got one question so i've kept in the slide right so now we'll be talking about network manager command line interface nmcli yeah so nmcli is a package manager right basically for controlling your networks for controlling your ip address dns for the system right and it's a very powerful tool you can easily actually do the changes on your ip address on your dns changes on your uh, whatever the changes you can do you can play with your network those things will be done by the network manager right very important concept those who are making notes you all are welcome to make notes yes 100 plus people are watching and we have got only 87 likes on the video our like target is 200 for this uh, sessions uh, right and every time it it crossed basically 200 and i would request you all if you have not done the like right please like it right uh, it gives really a motivation and after the stream is ended you all know what you have to do uh, you have to just comment down how you felt the session it is just a feedback and those who watch the live i mean those who watch the recorded stream after that they will come to know okay these many people have watched right so just a kind of support from you all now we will be moving to the nmcli network manager command line interface so for that what you need to do see guys again here yum repo configuration is important now before executing this step right yum install network manager can anyone tell me what would we have done right i am using yum i am using install i am using network manager as my command can anyone tell me before this step what would i have done so that my this step works can anyone tell me can anyone if you are able to relate with the first two slides right no one yeah create a repo yes munikanth is right and uh, we will first create a repo so that the network manager urls and uh, the repo names whatever i have told in the previous slide you will first create a repo for this and then give the command like yum install network manager right so when you give yum install network manager that's what i have given this command will hit the dot repo file and uh, uh, dot repo will actually the dot repo dot some file was there right dot repo file and th that file will internally point to the repo our uh, yum repository right now once i install the network manager what it will do is it will basically help us to actually initiate some different things so that i can change my ip address i can change the different things now some things i have already told you in the last session system ctl right system ctl is basically what it does is we can start the application we can stop the application we can make the application live 24 bar 7 right that's where we will be talking about now once the installation is done you will just start the application by using system ctl start network manager and these all are direct commands right those who will get the documents please practice from the documents right uh, i would definitely request you all to go through every document make your resume based on that if you don't get a job come to me again we'll again sit and we'll work together right now system control yes system control start network manager so i am starting the network manager right control control yes so system ctl enable network manager to make sure it is 24 by 7 now now guys see these two screenshots okay now imagine this phone is your laptop okay guys listen carefully i am telling a scenario now right okay listen carefully those who need the documents uh, the uh, the link is in the description right the pay link is in the description and in the comment section and in the attendance sheet but this time i am not sharing any whatsapp group i am not sharing any teams meeting invite purely it's for documents and it is for yourself if you need you can opt if you don't need that's completely fine right now imagine this phone 
is a laptop guys right now this phone is a laptop now this laptop has a port internet port you understand you understand this laptop has an internet port now what we do when we connect some cable to the internet port right we connect some cable to the internet port what will happen this laptop will receive the internet and this point right from where we connect the internet cable is called ethernet right ethernet port right and that's where we will see what we do right <coughs> now once i give the nmcli connection show active so what does it mean is it will tell how many active ports i am having for a linux system right so let's take a linux system is there it has two active ports means two connections it is already having right now we will see what does it has it has name unique id right unique identification id type ethernet and device what de what type of device it is connected a status status it will show show like whether it is connected and managed whatever it is just remember these two uh, screenshots will definitely come back to that now this slide is very important for you all to understand right so those who are watching uh, do watch till the end i'll be taking you through each scenario how you actually with the nmcli work on a linux system and you be a linux system administrator right now guys first thing first <clears throat> what i am trying to do is i am trying to add one port to my linux system getting me yes so what is the port uh, the type port is ethernet guys and you know how you see in the laptop na the physical uh, layer of the ethernet port you see in the laptop but it will not be in the linux system you will not see a uh, uh, visible port right linux is all about virtual machines and concepts right right so that's why what we are doing network manager command line interface nmcli connection add this command is used to add a port to your linux system and with that port we will play some different games here right now so now nmcli connection add type ethernet okay and uh, guys see what i am doing okay so once i give ethernet right and uh, you give what is the ethernet name also uh, right so the device device name basically what type of device you are attaching to the system right so now once i give this command what is happening guys ethernet enp 08s s8 is created okay success don't get confused here we'll be coming back right i have kept uh, like in a order wise but uh, as we go down now you will understand what we are trying to do okay now nmcli connections show when i do nmcli connection show it will tell me how many ethernet ports my system is having now you see 2f5 right 2f5 is created guys right understanding yes understanding but it is not assigned to anything you are seeing it is not assigned to anything all are with me all are with me see what it is nmcli connection show it is telling ethernet hyphen enp 0s8 it's the name name of the connection okay and it has a unique id 2f5 and it is type is ethernet okay device guys when we call device what is a device device is nothing but in our case let's take a wi-fi router is our device okay so now this particular connection is not having any device just we have created a port getting me we have created a just a port okay now we are trying to attach something to this port what we need ip address dns configurations everything everything we need right all are with me yes great so guys participate when i am asking so that it will help me uh, to know that you guys actually are understanding getting me yeah yes great now once i have created a network for me right i mean uh, a port kind of thing okay now what i am doing nmcli connection up so guys these all are direct questions which has come to me and at that time i prepared some notes based on that notes only i have prepared these slides right uh, if you have seen in the instagram i have showed you my notes right the first page itself not uh, complete notes right so definitely follow me on instagram right so that you guys know what actually i am doing daily right yes niarika is telling yes great now you see what i am trying to do so whenever a port or a device or a ethernet connection is created right you need to make it up guys until that it is it is not working okay it is dead okay it is not connected to any device or nothing okay so you see device is zero right 
now now what we are trying to do c okay when i tell nmcli connection up what connection i am making it up guys right ethernet this connection name let's take i want to make this connection down wired connection 3 as down so what i do nmcli connection stop okay that name connection name now what i am trying to do i am making it up which we have created just now and we are trying to attach to this device but but until <coughs> we have made the connection up this device will be always down right getting me all are with me yes now you see connection successfully activated the port right which we have created ethernet is activated and we are connecting to a device called enp 0 s8 this is a device let's take a router or some some switch right so now what you you have done nmcli connection show active so here we have not given hyphen hyphen active so it had showed the connection which is not active now because we have given active now what it is doing see 2f5 this 2f5 we have created here we have created the connection type ethernet connection i need and which device or which switch i am adding to enp 0 s8 now i am making it up using nmcli connection up getting me yes and i am making sure like my device is connected now for this particular device we will change all the ip address configuration and all those things yes great now this slide is clear all are with me can we go to the next slide yes yes with a y and uh, no with a no any questions i will take in uh, another uh, 10 to 15 minutes all right yes yes great any any anyone else have any questions give a why yes great tanjali is telling yes mahesh yes tanmesh great great you all are awesome yes yo that's what the spirit is guys definitely be with me right and uh, uh, definitely we will generate the success results in coming days guys i am guaranteeing you right better the package better the hard work better the um, benefits we will get in the nearby future right and uh, yes so now now what we have done guys for a linux system we have created a connection and for that connection we have made that connection up right right yes enp08 is having two connections now okay enp08 is having two connections we will see now it, it's a device guys okay see general device when i'm see correct guys aman is asking one question what will happen to the other connection very good observation because in the previous slide we had two connections to enps 0 s8 so you see <coughs> what is this when i say show device nmcli device show right you see enp 0 s8 ethernet type of that device is ethernet right and what is the ip address of that device ipv4 dot address ipv4 dot gateway ipv4 dot route ipv v6 and v4 we will only talk about ipv4 now when a device is connected to a linux system right now now device is connected now this device will actually help you to change your ipv4 dns gateway now you understand guys device right device okay device this one and you see what will happen now to change the linux ip address okay now we have the ip address something like this 192.168.4.26.24 right guys all are with me all are with me what is the ip address of the system all are with me 192. 192. what was that 168.4.626 correct yes yeah yes now what we have done in order to modify a connection guys very interesting remember when we are modifying an existing connection you you give the command nmcli connection modify wherever you give a network command first two words will be common nmcli connection will be common here you make it up down create modify okay now what we are doing existing device is there which is having some ip address and we are modifying the ip address to some different ip address okay now let's think our existing ip address is 193 point okay now i want to make that 193 point to 192 right so what i am command giving nmcli connection modify the device name guys okay this device name you remember in the previous slide this device we had right now what we are trying to change ipv4 dot address now from the 193 previous configuration we have changed to 192.168 right so this is how you change the ip address for a system and the command is simple guys okay now the interview question is 
okay tell me okay Praveen tell me how you can change the IP address for a Linux system right so yes IP address for a Linux system will be changed by using the NMCLI and uh, you guys have to give like NMCLI connection modify and you can clearly tell him like uh, you had a uh, uh, the Linux system has a device uh, right and uh, with that device you use the NMCLI you install the NMCLI right and you give the modify command yes now to bring the connection down or up I have already shown you NMCLI connection up was to bring the connection up NMCLI connection down is to bring the connection down so when I am bringing the connection down there will no <coughs> IP address or your system can't be accessed right all are with me yes yes for a Y yes guys all are with me yes okay great okay great yeah so only only Tanjil is uh, responding Tanjil yeah thanks uh, always Tanjil is our moderator guys yeah so Julie has given us a suggestion so Tanjil was earlier our uh, member I mean he from session one I guess he is supporting me so that's really good okay and guys you all know at 10k what we are trying to do yeah I am going to give some good things to our our channel supporters like I have few names one is Tanjil I'll definitely uh, have something for him and I think uh, a few of the people I have noted down the names right one is our Muni right I think a uh, few others whom I know like Julie right uh, definitely we will have something good things for you from my channel okay right and uh, we will have some good uh, what we call uh, some good things at 10k okay I will be telling you all those things I am making the plans right and if you have seen our channel has crossed 7k subscribers okay so it was really a happy moment right you all have supported a lot but yeah that was not so easy guys I I, I asked many people for this help uh, in in even to my uh, what we call right channel subscribe right so aise, aise hota hai, right that's how we grow right and uh, definitely we all will grow and you see like yesterday's uh, success uh, testimonial was down it, it was a little bit bad because one week I have worked on that video uh, myself and my editor right so that is the reason but yeah uh, once I get the confirmation from the management I will be bringing that uh, live to the uh, in some time okay yeah so why I talk in little bit some personal things is yeah uh, because uh, you all can connect with me right we are a family right so I know like uh, we'll be generating good results in the short time and uh, resume session was really good right and uh, people are getting response good response is what I believe right yes so <clears throat> yes great thank you all for the congratulations yes yeah so now we'll go ahead with a little uh, important topics right so now you know in order to change the ipv4 right ipv4 right how you change guys see first three commands are same and the fourth command was our uh, right getting me and you see ipv4 dot gateway for the gateway change and you see address what what we are giving ipv4 dot address and it is like ipv4 dot gateway right yes now in order to modify the domain name system let's take <coughs> your your linux system is having a ip address from this dns okay now what we will do is we'll change the dns to some other dns okay some other domain name system so what we do is we give the command like nmcli connection modify ethernet the device name ipv4 dot dns and you see all the details which are changed right are in the screenshot when you give the light device show the device name getting me getting me all are with me yes yes okay any questions guys we have changed the IP address of the system we have changed the DNS of the system we have changed the uh, what what else we have changed uh, the um, a gateway of the system right yes great so I would request you all uh, to have your notes right always keep your notes ready and uh, prepare and guys uh, <coughs> because I wanted to add more questions now I have made slides a little bit bigger so yeah please bear with me and uh, it will be a hectic time for me also right <coughs> I need to take some water also <laughs> yeah <coughs> okay I'll get some water hmm. 
yes so guys this is a uh, question which has come to me <coughs> in the certification exam and uh, this is nothing but resetting a root password and it will come to you also uh, because you are a devops engineer right and you know our all our applications where we are deploying on a linux right right on a linux system or on a kubernetes platform we deploy some data or our applications right all are with me yes great uh, okay <clears throat> great now imagine you have your application you have your 10 applications deployed on a linux system now suddenly you are only the admin let's take uh, i am the admin for my linux system and i am giving you a read access to everyone like one to 112 people are watching i am giving a read access to the 112 people now let's imagine the admin himself has lost the password for the linux system now how he will log in or let's take he has to give his uh, 120 members team the access or change the access settings how we will do right we cannot do right now for that reason this question many people will ask do you know how to change the linux system password right so now for them i will be telling guys uh, we are at 126 likes yes please make it 200 right those who have not liked the video please like it efforts you like it right definitely uh, will be generating good results in the coming days and uh, i am guaranteeing see trust my confidence right <laughs> uh, so don't uh, think any other way devops uh, documents also i am sharing right and uh, project document we will do one end to end project we will do right and uh, yeah august uh, my plan is uh, by august uh, 14th we will complete this bootcamp right and uh, i will plan something else for you all right great and uh, yes i forgot to tell you right uh, we uh, yes uh, will interview vary from center no no interview will not vary for based on the flavors of the linux system interviewer will ask like okay how you will do the change you just tell him like uh, yes uh, you just uh, have worked on centos or ubuntu whichever it is okay now resetting a root password in linux centos if forgot okay now <coughs> how you start your laptop in the same way you double click on a ec2 instance or you go into the terminal now once you go into the terminal how your laptop takes some time to the recovery right boot recovery we call immediately you need to escape press escape on a linux system now you see this black screen which i am showing you all yes <coughs> great now this black screen has nothing but it is at a starting position and if you are able to see clearly there will be a slight blur but don't worry i will repeat what i am seeing here there will be <coughs> press escape to edit press e to edit right and c for command prompt something based on the linux terms now for the step one what i do i press escape for changing my root password now when you press escape nothing will happen but what it will do now it will bring you to the black screen where you will see some other commands like step two commands where we need to press edit e for edit guys we are going to edit the configuration of a linux system great yes you all are awesome guys okay when you give escape and e it will tell you okay boss you go ahead and do the edit of the configuration of linux system great yes now why we are editing the configuration of the linux system is to change the root password because you forgot the root password right yeah got it <coughs> yes that's where that's where we need to work actually right so i hope you are understanding yes so when we forgot something when we forget something right so in order to that details we actually make this type of things right we actually edit the configurations of a linux system yeah now once you press e you are at step two once you press e what will happen we will see okay now in the step three guys listen carefully this is important okay now as we progress we will see in the session how the disk volume management you are doing when a hard disk is attached to a linux system how you actually convert it into a linux system readable format right now okay in the editing menu once you press e right you will get something called the mount volumes the root volumes right and you see there is a highlighted red line right which will tell you <coughs> what you need to do actually guys in linux now there is an important concept we we know r o r o right read right read write r w read write r x read execute 
right getting getting me yes so for those who are asking me for the packages right i have made a dedicated video on my with my students whoever have told me what packages they have got you can definitely check out that soma yeah yes so i have given based on my student community yeah read only ro for the read only rw for write read write okay now what we are trying to do now you know in linux or in the laptop you have a specific drive which is called c drive in the windows i am telling you have a c drive where all your configuration files are present yes you are understanding yes great great yeah all all are understanding where our windows configuration files are placed in the c drive right now when you place all the configuration files in the c drive similarly in the linux we have a drive right where the configurations can be changed now you see what is that drive guys actually that drive initially has read only guys okay now because we are entering into the edit mode only the admins can do i uh, only i can do not you all because you are my members okay only admin can do now admin can go to read ro and here you will see in the red line there you will see ro here where i am pointing i will change the ro what i am doing guys i am doing the ro to rw it means that particular drive right in the uh, okay let's assume this is a linux system this is your drive this drive has only ro now i am converting this ro to rw got it now so once we do that right what i am trying to do right we are adding one additional parameter to this in it okay initialization right and initialization is shell shell login and we have no shell login you all know types of logins we have cron login uh, i think one more login is there what is that cron login is there um, uh, what is that no no shell login right one, one is there and shell login i only know three if you know other logins please go ahead and give the answer right now step 3 is nothing but what i am trying to do this mount volume which has been mounted on the linux system i am making from read only to read write right contributors or owner cannot yes so now guys see what we are trying to do very carefully step 4 we are at step 4 okay step 3 i have changed this mount volume to read write now what i am trying to do right once we are at this point when i am just typing the changes of control uh, sorry uh, when i am actually trying to access the drive in the read write mode right so what i am trying to do press control x to enter into the single user mode once you are done with your previous step now what is happening is we need to enter as a user guys until that okay have you logged into the system tell me okay you all have questions i know that have you till step 3 have you logged into the system tell me yes or no yes for y no for n tell me this question answer right till step 3 have you logged into the system or not tell me this. yeah thinking no okay you tell me the answer okay only rajiv has given niharika no yes yes okay okay you all are thinking you have logged into the system okay great or, or who, who else chai fine yeah okay no okay anyone else anyone else no yeah guys for those who has given us we actually forgot the password na system password we have forgot right uske liye to hum log try kar rahe hain right uske liye to hum log dekh rahe hain ki kaise us system password ko fir se naya password deke we we will be logging in right yeah so you all are correct that's completely fine so we have not logged in into the system right we are actually trying to actually uh, access a disk with that we will change some data on the disk and we will be resetting the password right yeah now okay now guys you know apart from the user in the linux we have something called system root user also right now root user is there you all understand you all understand root user is there always now what we are trying to do na till here till step 3 we are not logged in into the system but when i am pressing control plus x right we are entering into the user mode now which is a system user mode 
right no not sudo also no not sudo system user mode that is one more user uh, i mean that is a configuration level edit we have entered into the configuration change level edit access okay yes now you see right what we are trying to do once you give control plus x okay so it will do all the things and it will give right now what we are trying to do ch root change root to system root sudo gives root level access yes sudo gives root level access but in order to go and change the system level settings you have to give sys root you have to go into the sys root guys again i am telling you are a root user you forgot the root user password correct guys try to understand na please you you are a root user you forgot the root user password again you cannot go as a root user na you have to go as a root ka baap ka user now you have to go as a system user getting me all are with me yeah i am showing i mean i am doing so much khichdi here <laughs> yes they are different yes i am i am doing so much jaju tant uh, what, what, what you call like jadu puja tantra mantra right with my hands and all those things yes yeah got got it right so we are not logging as a user we are logging as a system root user now you say ch root change root right we are from changing from root to the system root right so now step 6 very important step i hope you should already know how to change a password for a system right password for a user now to set a new password once you do ch root sys root right now you are actually in the system level configuration change mode now you give p a s s w d and the user value user name right root was the user we are here with a motto to change the root password right yes got me now what is the password name p a s s w d it's a command guys to change the root password right so p a s s w d let's take pravin is a user and pravin has a password okay now in order to change the pravin password what we give p a s s w d and username pravin with that if you enter it will give you this option new password right and you set the new password and that's it your new password will be automatically updated but not this one guys because you have changed the configuration level right because we have changed the configuration level changes there is some other things also coming in right all are agreeing all are good here a uh, give a yes with a y yes i'll go to the next slide right all are good yes great now guys se linux i have put additional uh, important things also with the se linux but for now try to understand se linux na gate ka watchman hai right se linux who is a se linux guys people will ask you if you are attending for an interview they will definitely ask you have you worked on se linux or not right and the se linux is nothing but this is a file okay i am telling you again with my jadu jadu tantra mantra right i am doing some shudra puja here so just try to understand this is a file and this file is residing where guys this file is residing in a linux system now this file i am only allowing to a specific set of users right and to that file i will apply the se linux right right se linux is like a label okay this is a file on that file i attach a label and that person or that people or that particular permissions which the person has they will be getting the file access now what we do now <clears throat> this this eighth command is nothing but we are making a touch okay touch is nothing but you all know touch not this touch right not a human touch basically when we are giving a touch to a linux system it will create the file with that name and when we give a dot to the file name it's a, it's telling like we are creating a hidden file okay getting me yes so guys we are at 137 likes right make it 150 at least 13 more likes we need and once we get 150 likes uh, our next target will be 200 great yes to create a file you all are correct yes to create a file right and uh, those who have not opted for the documents right only for the documents the link is in the description go ahead and check out that right now se linux is additional security yes great you all know this right so when i am giving this what will happen relabeling so basically <coughs> with the root user there was some other labeling which has been already done root has a different set of se linux now once because i have changed the root password 
again i need to refresh all the labels right new label labels i need to at attach to that now at the end once you do the touch sc linux relabeling will be done automatically and you know exit from the terminal you give exit and hit reboot right once you give exit and you give the command reboot now what we are trying to do our system was there our system uh, configuration drive i have changed it to read write and after that i have changed the uh, root i have went into system root user and then i have given the password passwd root with that root user password got changed and then i came i give the sc linux relabeling option then i exit then i reboot once you do the reboot automatically your system configurations will be changed getting me yes yes okay tanmesh very beautifully well said sc linux i will discuss coming slides yes you will do sc linux uh, disable for uh, if you don't want the sc linux uh, uh, don't want the sc linux relabeling right yes you all are awesome guys and uh, definitely right I, am, I, am, I need to learn from you all yes yeah we have some slides also on the sc linux yeah so we are at 457 right and uh, yeah so now this is very simple slide i have kept and uh, simple but yet many people will miss this because uh, uh, this also is a question straight away question okay straight away question in the rhcsa okay all are admin level tasks okay we all are doing as a admin level tasks okay now yes great now tar hyphen cvf now what i am doing guys i am converting this entire folder so many will get confused when you use tar the first command whether you need to give the tar file name or you need to give the folder path which you are actually zipping it or tar making tar right so you see tar hyphen cvf right compress verbose format right tar hyphen cvf backup dot tar this is the tar file name and what we are making the backup guys name of the archive and what we are actually backing up right home shine in carrier okay dot jar okay shine in carrier was my earlier community i think in linkedin i have the community but yeah that <coughs> uh, that community uh, with that community only uh, all the people till now have got the jobs right now you all are different community like whatsapp groups i have i am connected with you all in instagram i'm connected with you all in youtube so you are like community part two right so from you all also we will see the success results right great guys uh, you see here first will be the file name right and second will be the dot jar name right what you are trying to convert into the tar that will come second don't get confused this time right now create a tar dot gz okay tar dot gz if if they don't want tar if they want a gz file right so now you see create the archive c for create the archive v for verbose f for name of the archive z for compressed ggp archive file right and what is the difference between this and this only additional compression you are giving okay this was the tar file but if you need the additional compression it will be like uh, <coughs> it will be what like additional compression if you give zz okay so you see z if you are giving tar hyphen cv fz it will create a dot gz file all are with me yes when you give exclude let's take you have a folder now from that folder you want to exclude some files right so what you do you give hyphen hyphen exclude file name it will exclude from the compressed star file okay now everything is clear right extract content very important if you want to extract content from a tar file to a directory now you give this hyphen x okay remaining all are same hyphen x right we use gzip and bzip and tar use j ha correct yes so rishab you are awesome brother yes rishab has given a good good information by the way right so j and z right are two different concepts and uh, gzip for j if you want to me make bzip for z right yes great now guys very important concept we are at uh, uh, one more important concept okay tuning of the linux systems right that was a simple slide so I'll be moving ahead, right? I'll drink some water, right? Getting exhausted, <laughs> yeah? <clears throat> yes, so guys, any system you can take and practice. It's not a big deal, right? Any system you can make or take and practice, okay? 
yes great even using java jar yes any anything anything you can yeah okay we are at tuning of the linux systems and tell me guys why we need a uh, better performance from a uh, system why anything you know as i don't have uh, red hat certification how to include this no certification is not at all important niarika to everyone guys certification is not important if you have the knowledge if you have the ability to tell confidently if you have done some hands on on this a little bit definitely you can go ahead and tell okay guys i have asked you our question take it easy no problem yes so guys uh, i have asked you a question right how you will uh, okay why we need the tuning of a linux system why can anyone tell you tell me yeah sorry <laughs> yes uh, someone is telling yes thank you brother yeah so can anyone tell me why we need the tuning of the linux systems anyone yeah why why we need a performance basically yeah guys please respond na why we need the tuning of the system why we need the performance for a system nothing no no questions here performance no why we need performance basically that's what i'm asking right uh, let's take you have 10 applications and you have deployed 10 applications now your system is not working right that's bad na so why we need performance to make your <coughs> to make the ability of your system to work more yeah efficient speed yes better 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 things right you want your system to be the best right so for that we have something called tuning of linux systems and and guys whenever someone asks you in the interview tell me whether you were able to do the performance tuning whether you were able to do the how you will increase your performance of your linux system right then you tell me yes i have done that with the help of tuned application tuned is an application right <coughs> so basically this application will help you to perform the better tuning of your system right all are with me yes yes great so now let's imagine right you have the tuning of the linux system here right <coughs> right yeah we need to change kernel parameters no 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 need to change anything so guys see why we need the tuned software right you see low latency okay the profiles provided with tuned are divided into two categories guys okay this tuning application is giving us two categories right power saving this gives us basically some profiles i will tell you now if you want to save more profile right like a laptop guys okay what you do you click on the uh, uh, like what type of profile you need you go for the better better performance you go for the high battery uh, i mean high better usage means better ba battery consumption right and you go to the like less battery consumption right so now you see performance boosting profiles right and you see low latency for storage and network high throughput for a storage and network virtual machine performance virtualization host performance disk performance and you see all this performance right performance tuning is given by the linux right right we can actually linux uh, tune the performance of the linux system based on the need right and we will see what is the need for us now you see guys that is why i have kept the slide one whenever you are installing something right right you see yum install tuned tuned is a application right package manager right yum install tuned it will go to the dot repo file and it will go to here right file to directory and it will get that it is now system ctl enabled now tuned i have enabled the tune right and you see some performance tuning is done verify that tuned profile is active and applied so tuned right when there are some profiles given right and you see what are the profiles in the screenshot okay able to see balanced profile is there desktop profile is there power consumption profile is there virtual guest virtual host right throughput performance right you all are able to see network latency right and if you go with the balanced what we will get general general non specialized tune profile optimized for desktop use case optimized for performance at cost of increased right it means power consumption yeah how better performance means better battery consumption right yeah you see power save what what it will do optimized for low power consumption right and for the cpu memory and all 
right you go with the throughput performance right optimize the workloads yes all are with me you see some things i am doing here yeah you all are getting guys never worry never worry guys why because once you give this na to someone like you have worked on tuned right tuning basically right tuning of a linux system when someone asks you okay Pr- uh, pravin can you tell me how you have tuned your system you can tell some shell script automation along with that you tell them yeah i have used the tuned software i have installed using yum configuration and i was able to make the changes according to the need for the better performance better battery consumption right and all those things getting me yeah yeah good yes now here you see for using for changing the profiles right you use tuned t u n e d hyphen admin a d m okay now when i give recommend na the linux system itself gives me an option to select balanced okay now you see tuned a d m profile so this command is to get what linux system tells us are recommended one right now just go in the next step like we are going to the next step now let's take i want to set a profile okay now linux system has recommended me to go with balanced because uh, linux knows that uh, i use daily this much of system i need uh, only balanced system not a high, higher performance and all so what i will do i will set the performance like tuned hyphen adm profile and i will get, give like balanced here getting me getting me yeah so how you will set a profile means tuned hyphen adm profile and set balanced profile okay yeah all are with me if, and if you want the power save mode tuned hyphen adm the first two words will be same tuned hyphen adm will be same profile will be same and you can give virtual guest in power save for a better i mean you can give two right and you can give three also right all are with me all are with me a uh, y for yes yeah slowly we will go to the advanced topics guys okay now all are with me yeah okay sudhakar uh, the slides i will share uh, the link is present in the description go ahead and check out that right uh, i was doing this for last uh, few weeks you can definitely get the documents right yeah great so guys uh, we have come to some basics and uh, we'll see how to create a user how to create a group okay now for creating a group basically why we need group guys right we are a devops group similarly we will have a testing group similarly we will have a development group right group in the sense a team right so once we created a group right you have this commands right for group add for creating a group right you have something called uh, group right you see uh, w- what we have hyphen g hyphen o hyphen r hyphen f okay each things does some values right i'll not go into deep but what i will tell is right if you want to add some group you just give group add developers so let's take we all are developers right we all are developers and you say like group add developers and to this group we will add 120 members to this group now how we will add now we will see okay now in order to modify a group you give group mod okay group add was group add group mod was group mod guys these all things are certification level concepts right so definitely it will need you all right yeah we have crossed 152 likes okay 150 likes at least thank you all uh, and 48 likes are left and uh, those who are uh, thinking good uh, please like it right and definitely share it with your friends guys right uh, if you share to one also na at least uh, some things i will get for my channel right i mean uh, we i i wanted to have like fastest 10k right i am a little bit ambitious right and i wanted to prove to other people that yes Uh, i can help the community right uh, those who have actually downgraded me right so that is why uh, with so much uh, even though like uh, um, every weekend i am sitting making content right so that's okay only need is like fastest things to happen and uh, i can show them like okay i am also a good teacher and good youtuber right okay now going ahead i have created a group i have added uh, i have created a group with the command group add developers guys if you are making a notes just write clearly right so that you guys are understanding right <coughs> okay tuned is allowed in the production system only if your managers are allowing that 
but yeah you can you can definitely talk first in uh, involve the tuned in the lower environments if you see some performance then you go ahead into the production right don't just directly go into the production area okay now modify a group right to change the group name right and uh, we have something like group del to delete a group right so guys i'll be moving little bit faster because we need to complete more slides we are already at 510 but yeah remember we have added we have created a group like developers group or a group add devops group now i am adding all the people to this devops group how i will add you see right so this is a user add for adding a user to the linux system user mod for modifying the uh, username user del del deleting of the user group add for adding the group group mod modifying the group attributes group del deleting the group right this one slide will help you to understand how to play with the group right yeah now i am at creating the account now okay so i have kept some things here and there uh, i think i was explaining to one of my student okay that's fine so now let's take i am creating a group now what is the group guys okay group i have created already group was uh, what was that developers group okay so now once i have created the developer group you see i am adding a user right user add hyphen d only to the directory my directory my user directory will be home right this one right and hyphen g hyphen g is for denoting the group right developers hyphen s yes this is very important guys and i told you type of login it will allow us right cron shell login ksh and you would have seen in shell scripting bin slash sh right and you would have seen in some uh, shell script like uh, uh, what was that uh, no sh nsh or something right ksh sh right no no shell basically no shell login right that kind of thing you will see right and you see i am adding a user like some user let's take praveen here here yes bash correct correct shell no login shell yes yes jyoti correct so now i am using some uh, i am adding some user to the group praveen okay so now user add hyphen d my home directory okay and hyphen g the developers group hyphen s type of login and this is my name so once i done that passwd right passwd is changing the password of the user i have done that username change password change and i am deleting the user again so everything is straightforward you created a group you created a user you added this user to this group so that all the permissions of this particular 20 or 200 users are same as this group getting me yes all are with me now we are at sc linux guys okay great all are with me yes yes a why for yes okay can you tell user add he okay great where you have seen e i have not kept e anywhere okay i have not kept e anywhere jyoti you can uh, you can tell me if you have seen anywhere e okay yeah great so all are good okay so yes thank you thank you yes now we are at sc linux guys we will see what type of sc linux it is doing and uh, we'll also see some commands which actually will help you to enable the ac linux okay in the linux system okay thank you rishab yes no login guys i was not able to remember as been no login is not giving the login permission to that user okay great now we'll talk about ac linux okay sel okay security enhanced linux okay it's like a additional layer of security which we are assigning to various files right and you can see it is inbuilt in the linux but it is inbuilt in the linux but in order to make it enable disable or modify you see some permissions are there for us okay so you see enforcing sc linux enforcing sc linux permissive sc linux disabled okay when you say enforcing it means sc linux security policies enforced in that particular system getting me sc linux permissive right sc linux is enforced i mean it is present but it is not completely present right it will give you the warning like it is not present right disabled zero present of the ac linux getting me acls access control list is also one part of uh, the security enhanced security 
yes you are correct rishab i have not added acls here but yeah acls is also one question definitely set facl set facts facl for the linux system right so those who are very much interested to know about uh, acl access control list you can just type uh, keep in your notebook like access control list and uh, definitely it will help you okay yeah so okay <clears throat> what else guys okay uh, i am i i need a 2 minutes break right uh, what else you can you can chat with me i'll just see some some things okay i really need a break i don't know like i'm getting uh, because continuous talking is happening and you know like last first four weeks was good i was able to talk more but i don't know as maybe my performance is getting reduced <laughs> what you feel right so yes mm, that's okay uh, tell me something on the chat uh, i i will not talk for 2 minutes i will take a silence but yeah how much our, our likes 162 yeah, like the video our like target is 200 okay nothing nothing in chat you don't want to talk with me okay okay you guys are discussing something yeah when this boot camp will end okay good question any other questions guys ip tapers five or nine will be covered no i have not kept that guys uh, yes that is also a good thing firewall is easy only uh, i have not kept pravin bro needs motivation yeah this is correct <laughs> vimal yes 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 i need motivation go 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 you are awesome yes uh, that's cool yeah <laughs> that's cool yeah so yes our boot camp will end uh, by august 14th uh, there comes the two months uh, we started on july 11th right from july uh, sorry june 11th so we completed july 11th and august 14th will be last uh, day for our boot camp but i uh, what my plan is na till august 7th i will take the boot camp because i am traveling to bangalore on august 7th and i'll be staying there that week i will not have my laptop set up my uh, net and all right so i cannot take the uh, one week i will take uh, i cannot take a boot camp right uh, that will be our project boot camp only like august 14th is ideally before the independence our project session should be there but i will plan i will tell you no worries about that okay okay great so what else any questions any questions how to enable password reset uh, okay any any questions guys any other questions okay how is your job search basically all good all good uh, i mean are you are you trying to do a job switch anyone got the package are you struggling uh, to get a job or uh, you are struggling to actually uh, negotiate the offer what kind of things you need right uh, can you set up a okay rishav i am not sure about this i have not tried this yeah anything yeah great need reference okay <coughs> bro i know only windows will this session gives me real link. yeah yeah definitely sudhakar it will give you <laughs> okay yeah okay cool uh, enough of talk yeah we have almost uh, six more slides to cover struggling to get a job okay ankita okay they are asking more about terraform okay uh, okay what else applied for various vacancies but not receiving oh my god after updating resume through your review session getting interview calls increased now great that is good aman yeah thanks for your session so aman is telling yes that's great okay uh, how much will be the package for two years devops okay where is aman now aman singh okay great that's really good okay what else <coughs> okay that's really good okay now what else i can see here 88 or watching utterly butterly disastrous no never will happen uh, until uh, i am present uh, you all should get good jobs guys how much will be the package for 2 years of devops mm, it will be 10 almost yes uh, thanks for your session yes thanks dheeraj utterly butterly disaster this is good not getting calls uh, niharika i think you are not part of my resume session definitely update your resume you will get as aman said okay we will have to prepare a new resume yes definitely jyoti yeah i think jyoti has talked with me we can apply for after for completion of boot camp what is this can we apply you can apply 
during the boot camp if you are confident or apply after the boot camp Af- afraid about re- why you guys are afraid about recession see people will tell 100 things guys okay Don't, never bother about that right <coughs> okay no navin i am not going to answer this question uh, first uh, you tell me your background okay what is your background and all you have just kept the package who is getting right can we apply before completing the boot camp yes that's what i told go ahead and apply if you are confident right and uh, wait for the chance and grab the opportunity right and uh, what is what is guys okay no more no more questions guys uh, when i come insta live you don't ask anything when i come youtube live you don't ask anything right and uh, why okay okay that's good okay guys uh, so one more update i am starting a podcast series and uh, that podcast na what happened is because i don't know like how to record uh, uh, with the people right so first uh, two three podcasts uh, i have already recorded but uh, that uh, that's okay like it will look good it will feel good uh, but in the coming days i will bring good uh, visibility like the recording was uh, the video clarity was a little bit lagging but yeah yes that's what yes jyoti that's what i'm going to tell na everyone is asking about the package yeah that's what yaar everyone is a- asking about package you all should be making sure you are competent enough to get the package right na that's where the main package uh, main question is okay that's enough we'll start with the sc linux okay uh, as a fresher how we get okay uh, okay tanjil <coughs> yes your question is good attend sessions learn good things and apply to the jobs uh, podcast name no i am re- releasing okay i have already interviewed google people i have interviewed linkedin people i have interviewed adobe people right and slowly i am uh, calling more people right and uh, even i am learning so many things from them okay and we will implement those things in our topics also right yes so with that said we'll go into the sl linux okay now yes so okay guys come back to the session okay so those who have not liked the video like the video guys and uh, do share the link with your friends right at least one person get the subscribe subscription right we are m- mainly like we want to grow fast right fast in the sense okay that's okay like people will tell are yaar kahan se fast grow kar loge kya hai right people will tell but that's okay my uh, i am a little bit ambitious uh, right and uh, that is why uh, we will grow okay ambitious in the sense guys dekho जॉब आप लोग को मिल रहा है राइट जैसे अभी रिसेंटली मेरा एक स्टूडेंट को पैसा मिला है राइट ही गॉट आई मीन द बेस्ट पैकेज आई मीन नंबर वन पैकेज कुछ नहीं चाहिए हमें राइट वॉट आई विल नॉट आस्क इवन अ सिंगल पेनी फ्रॉम यू राइट बट वॉट एवर हेल्प ही वॉज टू डू ही हैज डन लाइक उसने सब्सक्राइब कर लिया उसने दोस्तों को बता दिया कि ऐसा है राइट दो थिंग्स ओनली गिव्स मी हैप्पीनेस राइट आई एम नॉट आस्किंग एनी थिंग राइट करेक्ट ना या सो गाइज एसी लिनेक्स यू सी हियर देर इज देर इज समथिंग right there is a person requesting the target right now sc linux is a sc linux is a additional security on your server right so now this this security will see whether the permission has to be granted for this request or not if no denied message if yes object will be accessed now we'll go to the next slide yeah yeah this is the important slide guys okay yeah so now status of sc linux okay so if if you are in front of a linux system in front of uh, you if you are in front of a linux system you just give sc status okay and it will tell you what is the status of your uh, sc linux in your linux system okay now now <clears throat> what we got what we got here guys our status is disabled right correct now if you want to change the status to enabled what we need to do you see vim okay vim is a command where you go into the sl linux configuration etc sl linux config all are with me all are with me guys note it down if you want to change the sl linux permissions you have to go to etc sl linux folder and config file okay in that you see here red mark sl linux is equal to disabled okay so i will change the sl linux to enable now okay so how you change the sl linux to enable <coughs> right you see there are some commands okay to change the mode from enforcing to permissive you give the a set enforce zero right sudo okay sudo uh, leave sudo but in order to set something for the sl linux you give set enforce zero yes 
in order to make mode enforcing back you give set enforce one so let's take i have given the uh, sl linux as set enforce one okay here in down so what will happen you see se status again you will see here something called enable right right got it yeah and you see here uh, automatically if i go to the file again etc slinux config and it will be enforcing here right getting me all are clear those who are not getting calls add experience you will get okay all are good everyone is good uh, who else i know tanjil anyways our moderator uh, niharika yes jyoti navin bhai vimal bhai yes rishabh yes uh, murinal uh, uh, i hope you are there if you are not there also that's good uh, no problem you can watch uh, video later then right? yes money is there yeah so now guys all are good yes a why with yes yes okay great okay okay great now we'll go to the other topic guys cron job okay have you heard of cron job i hope so you would have known so basically with the cron job what we do now we do the automation basically all right let's take we need to send emails like or in the shell script yes murunal thank you so guys in the session 5 shell script na you all have seen we have done 10 shell scripting real time scenarios where we have sent emails we have actually hit the jira rest apis got the data announced the data multi uh, i mean worked on the data sent back as a html page right we have seen that ha huh, correct job scheduling we do so many things with the cron job right so now in the linux there is a beautiful concept where you create a shell script or a python script and you add it to the cron tab okay cron job now batch jobs yes now you see now this uh, okay now you see there there is something called uh, time execution pattern okay so what we do we have something called 1 2 3 4 5 5 stars okay this five star not chocolate guys don't think of chocolate now okay what is this five star basically okay five stars are nothing but you see i have denoted here okay so we'll start from left and we will come till the right okay now first thing first okay now minute okay first star is denoting minute okay the next star is denoting hour day of month fourth one is month and day of week okay now how to generalize that okay now let's take you give me an example every one minute my shell script should run okay how we will hit i will give this star as same right and this will be the answer like star 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 like every one minute every day every month every i mean day of week it should run now let's take you tell me pravin my shell script should run only on saturday okay guys tell me if my shell script has to run only on saturday which star will you change the fifth star fourth star third star or second star tell me the answer then i will understand you are getting the question okay tell me got my question right you guys have got yes 5 5 yes okay great shakti will so apni yes last star yes five fifth star yes so in that way na see run cron job every minute not less than that run cron job for every 30 minutes so guys this was minutes na the first star was minutes so what till 59 minutes i can change here run cron job every hour right zero and uh, here are all our stars right now we'll see some complex thing now now and this is the shell script guys so this shell script will run every 30 minutes right at the end you just mention the path of the file right now if you see run cron job every 15th of the month okay every 15th of the month what was it like third okay day of the month right third star was day of the month got it so there is a command called cron tab hyphen l so it will list in the in the linux guys note it down ha huh? you will forgot it i hope you guys are noting like page right how i am i am assuming like when someone teaches me live i keep a new heading like how the new slide is and i put like okay this five stars are this 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 right for the next reference right and guys if you are liking the content na just tag me in your instagram also that's fine right in your instagram you can you can tell like at singam for devops some some data right so that your friends will come to know right and in youtube anyways i don't know you can tag me or not but yeah in linkedin definitely you can tag me 
i don't know like with the tagging people get fear right i don't know but yeah if you come out of the fear then only we'll do something different right that's completely fine again yeah we'll move it but yeah uh, i only saw one two people okay five people only have tagged me till now okay but yeah definitely you guys uh, can tag me if you need okay like at least on the instagram right okay got it let's move ahead and uh, cron tab iphone t yeah twitter yes twitter many of you uh, have tagged me guys that's really good in twitter more people have tagged me even tanjil has tagged me and uh, definitely in twitter uh, tag me guys in linkedin you can tag me you can just tell okay province in company session right just something like that if you have uh, the uh, the um, uh what you call the potential of tribute right that's that's what i call right so yeah cron tab hyphen l will list all the cron jobs in the file cron tab hyphen e those who are writing the notes cron tab hyphen e guys whenever you see e in the linux it is like edit so we are editing a cron tab file so once we edit you just go inside the file and you add this line right star 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 root slash backup dot sh so and once you save and quit out of the file every minute this backup.sh file will run okay guys those who are watching next few slides will change your career is what i can tell okay right now this is a very important slides okay those who are watching and those who want to leave uh, for some work you can definitely leave it's 5:35 Uh, what I will do now? How many slides we have? Yeah, last three, four slides are very important for you all to understand the disk management of the Linux, right? And you can directly keep like you have played with the logical volume partitioning, right? And uh, we need to increase the weight of the resume. Suppose your resume is this, na? If you keep like I have worked with the teams, I have helped the team. No one will see, right? You are with me. Okay, Tanjil, you want to drop? Yeah, thank you, Tanjil, again uh, for being the beautiful, wonderful moderator for me every time. Yeah, thank you. You can drop off. Yes. So, guys, uh, Tanjil, definitely watch the session later, right? So, these three slides is very important for you all to understand the things. Yeah. So, I'll move into the logical volume management, right? So, guys, what is logical volume management? We will come to know in a little bit of time. Okay. So, this is a Linux system, right? in the linux system you have some drives okay so how this drives will be na let's take uh, ec2 instance is there and you have a ebs volume and that is called a drive for it okay you attach the ebs volume so let's take 5 gb hard disk is there and you attach the 5 gb hard disk okay so now once you attach the 5 gb hard disk right in the linux there is a beautiful concept called logical volume management so what we do na we create logical volumes out of the physical hard drive Okay, so let's think. There is a physical hard drive attached to the system, and now we will create a physical volume. So, guys, this is the process how we create, and this is the question in the Red Hat Linux system administration. Yes, guys. Okay, so how actually we create from a physical hard disk? Na, how we divide the volumes? How we play with the volumes? How we create a logical volume? That's we will see. Okay, yeah. So now, okay. great so now there is a physical hard disk okay and we are partitioning the physical hard disk now okay we are dividing the hard disk and you see physical volume first we'll create the physical volume then we'll create the volume volume group then we'll create the logical volume and on top of that we'll mount the file system so anyone who has seen df h okay i'll type here in the chat okay okay wait df h have you seen this command guys df h yes If you give the df hyphen h, what will happen? Na, this df hyphen h will give you something like the volume of the particular file where it is mounted, right? Yeah. So now, yes, great. So now, what we will do? We will see. Okay. So again, you remember this concept, guys. Going forward in the next slide, we'll see. Okay. Physical volumes are there. From the vo physical volumes, we are creating. What we are trying to do? three physical volumes guys here you remember okay three physical hard disk were there okay we have divided into physical volumes from different physical volumes we created volume group from volume group we created a logical volume and that logical volume you see in the linux guys just tell me with a y how many of you have seen this name dev/mapper right 
like you see whenever you see mapper right when you give df hyphen h right or you give the uh, you actually go like f disk hyphen l right so guys what is f disk hyphen l f disk hyphen l is basically yes okay i will give you the commands guys f disk hyphen l okay i was not able to type f disk hyphen l and df hyphen h okay if you give this command you will see slash dev slash mapper so whenever you see like mapper that is a logical volume guys that is not directly a physical drive correct yeah so now what we are trying to do uh, if you are able to see the screenshot now there is something called device okay dev vda1 dev vda2 and there is a disk guys see let's assume guys okay i am not able to talk more and uh, i am not able to understand okay first of all like uh, what i am trying to tell is basically with that much power i am not able to talk getting me yeah so even i am drinking water i am not able to talk more right so yeah but i will complete this yeah yeah <clears throat> so if you are seeing this now yeah if you are seeing this disk okay uh, i hope you guys are able to see the screenshot disk is nothing but a hard disk guys and in linux na hard disk will be like this name okay i am typing in the chat just see uh, a slash dev slash vda okay slash dev slash vdb right in this kind of names will be there but in the windows how you will find like yeah how you will uh, come to know thanks niarika in windows how you will know d drive c drive e drive right and guys one more thing after the stream is completed na you uh, you can support me with your comments because in the live stream the comments will not be visible to the people right and uh, we are at 180 likes guys uh, 20 more likes to uh, bring our target okay and uh, at least 5 uh, okay every time i give 20 comments after the stream is completed but you guys are not giving 20 comments uh, not only like you have to give like provin it was good provin it was awesome but yeah something else which you felt like okay this was new right where you felt like okay this concept is new you learned or uh, our boot camp is uh, what are the other sessions you uh, uh, you want me to take right so anything you want me to talk i'll i'll definitely do great yeah thank you vimal yeah so now guys in linux now every hard disk is defined like dev vda1 dev vda2 dev sorry dev vdb dev vdc okay now understand 85.9 gb we have has a hard disk now i have attached this hard disk to the centos or a linux system right so that will be like dev slash vda guys yes great great okay okay thank you jyoti yes uh, and uh, great guys awesome ha huh? Uh, and my main motto na guys uh, some people are telling right from uh, people are telling like i am taking only slides okay so guys see i have seen many channels right where people tell end to end step like abhi hum log maven install kar rahe hain we are installing maven now maven ka configuration dikha diya then yaar uske baad usme kya kya hai dikha diya fir uske baad jenkins install kar diya usme kya kya ye sab ho gaya yaar no one needs all these things right you are understanding now industry is becoming matured if you keep those things no one will see aap agar aap agar likh bhi do na agar aap video dekh lo if you see the video frankly i am i am into a debate now okay because someone has told me this now what i am trying to tell you if you go and check out their channel and people will tell ki uh, you are installing maven let's take you are installing a spring boot application in eclipse or you are designing a uh, application right or you are making an installation of a jenkins docker and all those days are gone guys right if you need a weighted resume now people are more weighted resumes are less understanding you can talk with me in the chat i will definitely respond to you guys yeah i am telling some things to you all right uh, why i have come with the slides is whatever the real time content is there na if you keep in resume i mean it's not like uh, uh, you just see and you just keep no you have to learn a little bit from your end also and then keep it definitely i am giving you a assurance that your resume will be good okay great great yes great now awesome so guys uh, now we will go to the next step right and i will show you something called swap partition and we have logical volumes creation okay two things 
very important okay tanjil is back thanks tanjil guys you understood you understood this thing how the physical hard disk we have divided guys i have not given the commands here i am not going to these steps also because in the last slide i have given the steps how we will actually achieve this so you need to understand how uh, what are the commands for various steps so for this step there will be a command 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 and for this step there will be a command so five steps five commands will be there and i will be telling you that okay pv create v volume group create okay management of logical volumes lv create okay i will be telling you all that yes yes definitely guys whatever you are learning you keep like you have worked on linux and you keep some points where you have done logical volume partitioning swap partitioning guys lovely topic a beautiful topic for you all for today's evening okay and uh, i i would request you all to be there with me for another 10 minutes yeah it's 5:44 we will complete the session soon so guys swap partition is nothing but whenever you want your ram right let's take you have 3 gb of ram in the linux system now uh, 3 gb of ram is getting filled and uh, that is not able to take the load now what happens now if there is no swap space in your linux system it will get crash but this swap space is mandatory in every linux system which will actually take some of the load from the ram or it will keep some of the unwanted process right some lazy processes will be there in the swap partition swap is nothing but a, a space a imaginary space okay a uh, imaginary space where all the data is kept now we will see why this swap partition has come and if you are able to see right okay you are able to see great now if you are able to see right in this picture free space vda1 guys you remember vda1 vda2 vda3 vda1 vda2 vda3 is from where we have got guys vda1 vda2 vda3 right from the main hard disk okay from the main hard disk like uh, vda was our main hard disk we divided vda into some disks vda1 vda2 vda3 okay now if you see from there we are creating a swap space also right so now this swap partition serves as overflow space for your ram yes guys listen it listen here carefully guys please very important concept and guys you don't have any doubt here why i have kept 82 no doubts tell me na no doubts why i have kept 82 here 13 more likes to go guys 13 more likes to go give it a like okay and uh, yeah after the session is completed at least 10 comments ha huh? please okay bolo na are yaar uh, what is that 82 koi bol hi nahi raha can anyone answer what is that 82 guys please you don't know okay at least a yes or a no you don't know n i will go ahead with with the tell don't know okay is tanvish if okay type 82 yes i have okay for sir great <coughs> okay in linux na there are some numbering system guys for for different types of uh type of the data we need type of the disk partition we need now what we are doing guys we are a admin and we as a admin are dividing the drive of the linux system into various parts got it yeah so now i have created a let's take a swap now so for the swap partition i will select the type as 82 i will tell you now okay so now guys swap partition when someone asks have you worked on the swap partition yes proudly tell them i have worked on the swap partition and this is the com compulsory slide guys you don't need to anywhere go and check also i have given step by step what you actually do in the swap partition okay similarly for the logical volume partition i have again given the slide okay no ports nothing nothing is needed no nothing is needed and uh, okay 82 is not a port guys okay come back i will be telling okay why we need ram oh sorry why we need uh, swap partition for prioritization and hibernation okay right prioritization let's take some dead process are running some waste process are running right and it will send to the swap partition now guys create a swap partition very very important if you are making notes make it if you have not opted for the documents the link for the pay is in the description uh, you will find the link as link right and those who have not filled the attendance go ahead and fill the attendance right and uh, yeah i forgot to tell if you have not connected with me on instagram please connect with me every thursday i come live i give the notifications for every boot camp 
and uh, once the boot camp is completed there is some other things also coming up on my channel so yes definitely it's not like i have completed boot camp and i will leave you all we need uh, at least success results guys so much hard work we are putting in right we are studying together na and uh, definitely uske baad matlab kuch naya things hai we will definitely do that okay now guys whenever you are playing with the hard disk of a linux system whenever you are playing this is a hard disk guys okay ye ye jo mera hath hai this is called hard disk and i have attached to the linux system and i will start with f disk command okay okay you all know f disk f disk is the main command where we will actually play with the hard disk now i have told you what we are trying to do guys we have a hard disk called vda all are with me ha huh, i am coming to bangalore uh, on august 7th right and i i will be there in bangalore only will definitely meet right and uh, I, i i will intimate you all in instagram right and uh, we will sit together we'll discuss like what are the plans what how we will achieve good things in our channel okay yes great now guys f disk dev vda is our disk hard disk this na ye mera hath this is dev vda f disk and i have uh, uh, i am playing with this hard disk now okay so when we give this command f disk hyphen dev vda okay i want to divide this i want to convert this hard disk into a swap partition with some 512 mb okay i need a 512 mb partition swap disk okay from this uh, let's take 1 gb okay so 512 minus okay 1 gb minus 512 how much i am left with let's take 480 or something plus buffer okay but here i am getting some 512 mb now when i give this command immediately na linux will probe me to give uh, it will ask it will give a blank space where you need to enter small n okay wherever the green is there you all need to follow those steps and you can blindly tell to the interviewer that you have done from your hand getting me getting me okay okay great so guys see dev vda press n okay when we are hitting n right it 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 means n for new partition okay from here i am creating a new partition and uh, the third line right the third command you need to give it will ask like how much space you need for the new system you can give plus you give plus 512 mb right it means you need a 512 mb of swap t i told you na next is t so guys just imagine whatever i am telling in your brain okay in your mind just think okay in the black terminal how you are doing okay when you give the black terminal f disk slash dev vda the next thing is a space will come a blank space you give n the next will be 512 mb you need to give next will be type of partition okay t when i give t right it means type of partition you need to give the number okay number is 82 so i have, I have given when we are giving the type of partition as 82 it means i am asking the linux system to make a swap partition for me right all are with me yes great great eight more likes guys eight more likes okay great okay great so now t type of partition is completed and w for quit so we have done that and guys see part probe na so if you are not using part probe what will happen i will tell you till here till 1 2 see my mouse okay here see the cursor here 1 2 3 4 5 till the fifth step your swap is created but to the linux system to understand that swap is created we will give the part probe command and the next commands we will give part probe what happened guys dev vda3 from here dev vda we already had vda1 vda2 right so here vda3 is our linux swap all are with me understanding very clearly i am explaining again i will tell there was a hard disk vda already there was <coughs> uh, the drive partition happened vda1 vda2 now we are creating linux swap so the third drive is called vda3 okay so what i am doing part probe dev vda3 right to let the kernel know about the partition right yes great so guys uh, those who have not subscribed to the channel please subscribe yes ahalyan swain yes thanks a lot brother right and uh, definitely uh, it's good right and uh, yeah i'll be soon releasing the community membership also for our uh, our channel right and uh, you will definitely find something called join right uh, uh, we will make a community for us okay 
so i will be planning that soon and i'll be telling you all so no worries about that okay and uh, yeah good okay now mk swap guys okay great now mk swap is nothing but right to use the swap partition guys see abhi humne divide kar liya vda3 guys in your brain have only vda3 here okay now we are at vda3 now what we are trying to do we are making that vda3 partition okay to let the kernel low by which command part pro okay now once we told that kernel okay this is a partition okay now how we are making that swap partition how we are making that partition as a swap we are using mk swap guys how will i know that vda1 and vda2 are already created great question navin for that only we gave the previous command na f disk hyphen l right f disk hyphen l so okay i have not put the cursor here okay f disk hyphen l will show you what are the uh, drives present initially but you don't need to worry this vda3 will automatically get created after you give that tw okay so then you will come to know that vda3 has been automatically created got it so everything remember in your brain how we are creating okay so now we are mounting okay when i am giving mount hyphen a right what is happening okay guys i tell you every time uh, my uh, family or my parents go out and come so i have got a, a ring for the bell right i'll just go and open the door right and that is my responsibility so just give me one minute i'll just go and open the door don't go anywhere right you guys can discuss over the chat i'll just come Okay. Okay. I'm here. Okay. Able to hear me? Okay. Got it. So now we were at Mount A. Yeah. So now, guys. Once the mounting is done, if you close the Linux system, right, this mount will be automatically disabled. Okay, so you know FS tab. Okay, this is the command which people will ask in the interview. How you make the partition disk partition as permanent? Okay, so what you do now, you go to the FS tab. So guys, if anyone is in front of the Linux system, you can just go and search like V I E T C F S tab. F S tab is a file. where all the disk related partition things will be available guys okay i am typing in the chat also very very important and very 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 useful actually yeah you can just keep and tell to the interviewer that okay you have learned the disk partitioning and all right so if you give vi etc fs tab for the permanent mount what you need to do is whatever the drive you have created you see dev vda3 and what is the type of partition right you give you give all those details and automatically right what will happen is automatically the mounting of the partitioning will be permanent even though when your system gets shut down right right you are understanding even though your system gets shut down this partition will be permanently mounted right fs tab equal to disk related partition available yes great so guys if you don't do the fs tab mounting right if you don't map the dev vda3 into the fs tab file then your linux system will not understand and it will not make the partition as permanent and we can we we are actually in the chances of losing the partition right all are with me yes it was good slide right i i i literally love this slide i mean i have kept here and there but yeah that is what i got okay what you got rajiv this is this question you got rajiv Raju is telling something, but yeah, that's fine. Okay, and why we use double swap? Okay, where is that? Okay, swap on hyphen s is nothing but we are making sure everything is completed. Okay, so where we have used double swap? Oh, okay, okay, two swaps. Okay, guys, one is for telling that it is a swap partition, and another is a name. Okay, 
so you will guys whatever i am telling na just check from your end also like you will come to know in etc fs tab what are the details we add okay so yes okay guys logical volumes we are at logical volumes guys so logical volumes play an important role uh, in managing your disk okay yeah great guys guys okay six more likes i think uh, someone has uh, disliked the video okay six more likes for the 200 okay this is the result i got after typing the command okay what result uh, i didn't saw the result okay so i missed that okay sorry for that now guys we are at the logical volume and uh, the time is 559 almost uh, okay 555 or something okay we are at almost the closure another 5 minutes we will close the session okay thank you yeah great so guys again for the logical volumes i told you first command f disk f disk and again our hard disk was which was our hard disk guys dev vd only okay and we give n and for new and we add 500 mb okay yes t guys earlier we gave 82 for partition of the linux system as a swap it was 82 guys okay right understanding but for the logical volumes it's 8e okay 8e very important guys it's very important to you all know that how much you have actually worked on the linux system right yeah able to understand great awesome right now uh okay wq save and quit and reboot vm till here everything was same guys okay so what will happen internally dev vda4 because we have already created vda3 now let's understand like vda4 is created okay or let's take like uh, vdb okay so i have done f disk dev hyphen vdb right yeah and uh, till here you have created okay now what we do now is pv create okay physical volumes create right those who get the documents you compare this slide with the one slide back right uh, where we have seen like pv then uh, lv then volume group right so pv create what i am doing this was the disk i created from this process and then i am giving pv create right from the pv create i create the volume group okay volume group create and test is the name of the volume group guys pv create right whatever the disk i have obtained from this steps i am creating a physical volume pv create volume group from the dev vdb okay test so what we are doing now we are chunking out a small small layers from the disk so guys very beautifully i will tell okay please understand i cannot talk more right please understand now this is the disk let's take dev slash vdb is our disk from that disk what we have done we have created a partition of pv create okay pv create then what we have done a small partition of volume group create with a name test okay from the test what we have created you see lv create logical volume we have created okay and uh, logical volume create of hyphen l okay logical volume create hyphen l 30 okay 30 into 6 uh, guys uh, i'll not be able to explain in depth this concept but yeah try to understand this volume group and logical volume right Th those are like into multiplication so 6 3 180 right 63 is 18 so how it will like 6 into 30 so 180 mb is what i am creating okay lv is the logical volume and you know we are mounting the logical volumes on a directory guys okay so what will happen na once you mount the logical volume into the directory why we call logical guys because logically physically it is not present okay physical drive from physical drive we have created a logical drive from the logical drive we are mounting on a directory mount slash storage right and uh, in linux there are various types of file system right so i have converted my dev slash test slash new so where it came you you see now test was from volume group right and new from volume logical volume right so this entire thing will create a file system for me and what type of file system interviewer will ask like okay tell me how many type of file systems you have right yeah for rebooting what will happen now uh, the file systems gets adjusted and it will tell you okay the file systems are present okay got it why we do reboot yeah that is what i am telling yeah uh, once you do the reboot the file systems gets adjusted automatically okay it will tell like okay uh, now you only imagine the disk is there na the physical disk was there 
physical innocence in the system from there we created a logical value until you reboot right that sometimes it happens okay reboot is not mandatory but i have kept so that you follow the data right now interviewer will ask what are the types of file systems okay ext file system is there extended file system we call okay ext file 1 ext file 2 ext file 3 no no it's not raining uh, i think that is my uh, fan sound right it's not raining i don't know like it's not raining everything is good yeah so now we make here virtual file allocation table vfat as a file system okay so guys this is also uh, yes this is also very important vfat Yes, VFAT is very important. Uh, okay, VFAT, yes. And uh, virtual, what is VFAT, guys? Virtual file allocation table. So we are just making sure whatever the uh, volume group we created, right? We are converting that entire file as a VFAT file system. Okay, yes, great. Network tra transport, uh, net NTFS, network transfer <coughs> file system. Yes, yes, guys, NTFS was also a question because I cannot put that everything now it's already two hours right our session start uh, so guys last slide I know you will have a little bit doubt but don't worry right don't worry definitely you will get the knowledge right types of file systems I have told you yeah there will be different types of file systems one is ext file system which we call extended file systems right <coughs> so now ju just understand this is a folder if I want to make the folder as a extended file system I will give like command like mkfs make file system mkfs is nothing but mkfs make file system vfat if i if i want to ex ext ext file system what do i do mkfs dot ext right we have extended file system one we have extended file system two extended file system three extended file system four vfat okay new technology file system okay is it ntfs is that one okay i'm not aware of that okay yeah so yes uh, i'm good from my side guys uh, I'll, I'll, I cannot talk more, <laughs> right? It's already six. So, yeah, I'm at the thank you slide. So, yeah, the thank you slide, you can read from your heart. Okay, 79 are watching, how much are, uh, are the likes we got, okay? 198, okay, two more likes, guys. Two more likes, I'm struggling to get likes from you all, right? Okay, two more likes and uh, we will be happy. And now, see, uh, I've given something for you all. <laughs> okay uh, if you are able to read uh, from your heart read it yeah or else i'll i'll just um, repeat that okay so i'll just repeat subscribe to the channel if you are liking the content and do share the channel link with your five of your friends right and instagram telegram twitter everything is same i didn't want it to keep different names for different uh, apps so everything is same singham for devops just uh, connect with me i i usually do the insta live also right and youtube and linkedin you all know Praveen Singh Ampalli already right and uh, in youtube uh, sorry in linkedin you will come to know uh, in the features list if you swipe to the left okay left right if you swipe to the left you will get all the students who got placed in various organizations right yeah great so yeah great so any questions for me reach 200 likes yes that that's really good yeah that's what uh, my sessions mainly focus and uh, from your end what you need to do is guys yeah uh, you need to work really hard for you all to place this content into the resume right and uh, those who are taking the documents just make sure you are preparing the content from that if you are placing in the resume like let's take you have worked on the logical volume partitioning make sure what does part probe do what does fs tab do just google it now you don't need to go anywhere what contents you need to study i have given in the resume uh, sorry in the slides from there you need to work little hard next session every saturday i come live you all know that every saturday i come live right so next saturday uh, next uh, live will be when guys uh, i'll just see the date 30th of july okay next saturday i will come live uh, uh, i i i spread the word across whatsapp groups across instagram across telegram across linkedin and across youtube right so five platforms are with me twitter i am new so i'm not using that much twitter uh, but guys uh, what you can do now if you are really supporting me tag me now at least tag me and tell to the people that okay this session was good uh, or else when i am sharing some post related to the session you can just share with your friends right great so next session topic next session i am thinking uh, aws we will do end-to-end -end project 
okay end to end project like uh, you deploy an application how that application is behaving from there your tomcat server your apache web server everything to how actually you access the urls like www.flipkart.com right so you you need to understand from end to end guys right it's not like hum log thoda kar liye thoda project baat kar liye no you need to understand what will happen if a person hits www.amazon.com or flipkart.com from there how the url transfers how the request transfers how the cookies get added how the uh, additional headers get added how the request forms how it hits to the apache web server how the apache web server converts that how the tomcat tomcat to the application then back the request right you all needs to know that uh, okay great uh, great so guys uh, how the wifi is get connected okay i didn't get that question aman singh how the wifi is get connected so uh, thanks pravin bro yes tanjil see uh, uh, this software see everyone can change the domain there is nothing like uh, uh, how a software engineer can get into devops right you can definitely change uh, so no worries in that just put all the data of what uh, whatever we are learning in the channels right so yes support the channel guys yeah uh if you are really liking the content uh, share it with your friends yeah and uh, thank you all for your support uh, with that said i'll take a leave okay it's already 6 7 i don't want you make make you all wait but definitely our, our next target should be top organizations right yes i'll definitely plan all those sessions in the next things okay so with that said i'm signing off this is pravin singhampalli here right uh, with all your love and support we are growing and uh, we want our channel to grow more big right so 10k soon where uh, i'll be spending all the money uh, to you all right uh, and definitely share the channel link with your friends and uh, those who are actually um, supporting me there is some goodies for you all and uh, those uh, who are actually uh, have not received the documents uh, you can pay uh, with the link in the description go ahead and pay that i will be sending the documents within 24 hours right and guys those who have paid the documents have already got the documents as far as i know right so everywhere we are connected right yes great so thank you guys for all your support and take care love you and a great bye to you all let's meet in next session on saturday 30th july okay great great with that said bye yeah